Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Sony FE 24-70mm f2.8 G Master 2, a high-end standard zoom aimed at event and wedding photographers, or anyone who simply wants the best quality general purpose lens for their alpha mirrorless camera. Sony loaned me the lens for testing, and in this review, I'll show you what it can do. Launched in April 2022, the 24-70 GM2 becomes the second G Master lens to receive the Mark II treatment, although the original Mark I model, which joint launched the G Master series six years earlier, remains on sale. The new Mark II version costs around $2,300. Check the links below for the latest pricing, compared to around $2,000 for the Mark I at the time I made this review. This puts the new Sony at a roughly similar price to the equivalent Canon RF and Nikon Z models. If you'd like a more affordable f2.8 zoom, Sigma's 24-70 f2.8 DGDN Art is around half the price at just $1,099, while Tamron's 28-75mm f2.8 DI 3VXD, thanks for that naming convention Tamron, is even cheaper at $899, albeit starting and ending at a slightly longer focal length. I've got reviews of both of these lenses here or at cameralabs.com. Okay, back to the new Sony 24-70 GM2, which at 88mm in diameter may be roughly similar to its peers, but comes in shorter at 120mm. That's shaving 16mm from the Mark I model and around 6mm from the Canon and Nikon versions. But the really big difference is the weight, which at 695 grams is now comfortably lighter than the Mark I model, which weighed 886 grams. Not to mention the competition with Nikon, Sigma and Canon's lenses weighing in at 805, 830 and 900 grams respectively. This makes the Sony GM Mark II the smallest and lightest 24-70 in its class, and I certainly felt the weight difference when carrying it around all day. Starting from the end of the barrel is an 82mm filter thread, followed by a free spinning and very smooth manual focusing ring. Behind this is an autofocus manual focus switch and two programmable function buttons. And these are followed by the zoom ring, which extends the barrel by about 35mm when zoomed to the longest focal length. While the Mark II lacks the locking switch of its predecessor, which held the barrel at its shortest focal length, it gains a large switch on the opposite side of the barrel that allows you to adjust the zoom friction between smooth and tight, and this can be handy when adjusting it during video. At the start of this clip, I have the lens switch set to smooth, where it feels very quick and light to turn, but it's fairly difficult to perform a zoom at a constant speed. Set the switch to tight though and it feels much more damped and that makes it easier to maintain a fairly constant zooming speed or to make smaller, more precise adjustments and that's useful if you're taking still photos too. Oh, and even when it's set to smooth, I didn't experience any creep with the barrel pointing directly up or down so I certainly didn't miss the locking switch of the Mark 1. Closest to the mount end is a new aperture ring, now common on most new Sony lenses but absent on the Mark 1 version. It runs between f2.8 and f22 in one third increments with an A position for body base control and a lock switch to keep it there if desired. Like other recent Sony lenses, the aperture ring can be declicked for smooth and silent adjustment using a switch on the other side of the barrel. You can see it in action here, adjusting the aperture while filming, and while I don't believe the increments have become any finer, the actual change between them is smooth and that gives the visual impression of stepless adjustment. And finally, here's the lens fitted with its supplied petal hood, which mounts on the bayonet end of the barrel. In a nice upgrade over the Mark I, the hood now includes a small window, which slides back to provide access to a polarizing or variable ND filter. The 24-70 GM2 is also extensively sealed against dust and moisture, and includes a rubber grommet at the lens mount. Like its predecessor though, there's no optical stabilization, so you'll need a body with IBIS to iron out any wobbles, or of course, film using a gimbal. At least the lighter weight will make it easier to balance. Okay, now for my tests, all made using an Alpha 1 body, and here's starting with autofocus on the 24-70 GM2 at 24mm 2.8. The lens now employs four XD linear motors in a floating group that delivers visibly snappier focusing than the Mark 1 model, as seen here. And now with the lens zoomed 70mm 2.8, where it's still very quick and confident in operation. This was with the Alpha 1 set to single autofocus, but the extra speed also makes it more practical for shooting close range action in continuous autofocus. Here's a quick burst of Brighton Seagulls using the 2470 GM2 at 70mm 2.8 on the Alpha 1, 
and the camera was set to wide area with bird eye detection and continuous AF. I shot this at 20 frames per second using the H plus mode and the Alpha 1, but the lens will also sport speeds up to 30 frames per second. While we're talking autofocus, here's a video test in AFC with the lens back at 24mm 2.8 using a single AF area in the middle of the frame, where, as you'd expect, the focus pulling is smooth and confident. And now for the long end of the range at 70mm 2.8, again effortlessly pulling focus between near and far. The lens autofocus is also essentially silent in operation. Next, for face tracking at 70mm 2.8, where you can present pieces to camera with a decent amount of blurring in the background. Again, with the Alpha 1 set to wide area with face and human eye detection, the tracking is absolutely effortless. And now at the wide end of the range for environmental presentations, showing more of the surroundings. As I wander around the frame, a brief nod to Sony for continuing to make these autofocus tests a breeze on their latest bodies and lenses, which simply nail it first time. Who cares if the Alpha 1 screen doesn't face forward? If I'm in front of the camera, I know I'm going to be in focus. Now for focus breathing with the lens at 24mm f16, manually focusing from infinity to the closest distance and back again. As I focus the lens closer, you'll see the field of view broaden a little as if the zoom was becoming a little wider. It's fairly mild though and also works with the compensation mode on models like the Alpha 4. With the lens zoomed to 70mm f16 and again manually focusing from infinity to the closest distance and back again, you'll notice the opposite effect. So there's still some breathing visible, but this time as I focus closer, the field of view reduces a little, as if I was zooming into a slightly longer focal length. Again, it's pretty minimal though. This got me thinking though, if the breathing effect is opposite at each end of the range, maybe it reduces somewhere in the middle. So here's the lens, roughly set midway through its range at around 45mm, and as you can see you can essentially eliminate any effect of breathing without the need for digital compensation. So if you're really bothered about the field magnifying or reducing, just set the zoom roughly halfway. Okay, now for my landscape, portrait and bokeh tests. And again, all were taken on an Alpha 1 body to really put it through its paces. And I've used the default settings for lens compensation. So that's with shading and chromatic aberration correction set to auto. But for this lens, distortion compensation is set to off. So let's start with my distant landscape scene, angled as always, so that fine details run right into the corners. If you like my approach of using distant real life subjects to test lenses, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks. So here's the lens at 24mm f2.8 and taking a close look in the middle reveals a tremendous amount of detail and high contrast even with the aperture wide open. Closing at one stop to f4 provides a small boost for the pixel peepers out there but as far as I'm concerned it's looking really great in the middle at f2.8. Heading out into the corners of the f2.8 image shows the lens maintaining a respectably flat field. Remember this was focused in the middle of the frame and there's only a little bit of darkening due to vignetting to mention. As you gradually close the aperture, this darkening lifts, and there's a mild boost in overall corner crispness, but the lens really is performing very well at 24mm. Next, let's zoom the lens to the 35mm focal length, here starting again with the aperture wide open to 2.8. Taking a close look in the middle of the frame tells pretty much the same story as at 24mm, so lots of fine details and high contrast straight out the gate, with a very mild boost if you can stop it down to f4. Returning to the f2.8 image and heading into the far corner shows a very mild drop in sharpness and minor darkening from vignetting, but it's still a great looking result especially as again it was focused in the middle. As you gradually close the aperture, any darkening will lift and you'll gain some extra sharpness in the far corner. Next here's the lens at 50mm, again starting with the aperture wide open to f2.8. Now on the previous Mark 1 model, I found the quality gradually reduced as the focal length increased, but Sony appears to have banished those demons here. There's loads of fine detail in the middle at f2.8 and again only a tiny boost if you were to close it to f4. Meanwhile returning to the f2.8 image and heading into the far corner sees those details remain crisp right into the extremes and at this point there's little to no vignetting to mention. Indeed closing the aperture here has minimal benefit. And finally for my distant landscape scene at the longest focal length of 70mm again starting with the aperture wide open at 2.8. Taking a close look in the middle shows a tremendous amount of high contrast detail with no real benefit stopping down. The original Mark 1 lens may have been weakest at 70mm in my own tests, but I've no complaints here. Heading into the far corner shows the lens continues to perform very well and deliver a flat field with no real softness to complain about. Stopping down a little will give you a minor boost, but ultimately I was very satisfied with the results throughout the zoom range with a distant subject. 
Now let's move on to portraits, the bread and butter of this kind of lens at the long end of its range. So here's what you'll get with the 24-70 GM2 at 70mm 2.8. Now even just looking at the full image you can see the subject is already very sharp and nicely separated from the background. Zooming in on my eyes reveals loads of fine details and again bonus points to the Alpha 1 and lens combination which delivered a 100% hit rate in my portrait tests here using nothing more than a wide area with eye detection. Looking more at the background shows the lens enjoys smooth rendering of blurred areas with no busyness or other distracting artifacts, so a solid result on the portrait front, as indeed you'd hope for this kind of lens. To better evaluate the background rendering and performance at close distance, here's the lens at 24mm 2.8 from its closest focusing distance of 21cm, at least at that focal length. The subject's sharp and the bokeh blobs are reasonably well behaved, with only faint outlines and textures within. The blobs at the extremes do become sliced into unusual shapes though at the maximum aperture. As you close the aperture down, these shapes become more rounded, while the 11 bladed aperture system stays mostly out of the way. At the other end of the zoom range, here's the lens at 70mm 2.8 again from its closest focusing distance, which at this focal length becomes 30cm. Now from this distance, I could reproduce 104mm across the frame, making it pretty useful for semi-macro shots. The blobs here are much larger, and there's some faint concentric patterns within, but the elongation is milder than before and essentially eliminated as you begin to close the aperture down. The Mark II lens can not only focus closer than its predecessor, but thanks to the floating focus group delivers much crisper results at short distances, as you'll see in my sample images in just a moment. At the other end of the aperture scale, here's the lens at 24mm f22, pointing directly at the sun, where the 11 aperture blades deliver 22 well-defined diffraction spikes. Ok, now it's time for my final verdict, during which I'll show you a selection of images taken with the lens mounted on an Alpha 1 body, and as always if you'd like a closer look at those pictures, or their full EXIF data, you can access the originals via my review at CameraLabs.com. The Sony FE 24-70 2.8 GM2 is an outstanding lens, addressing the few shortfalls of its predecessor to become the best quality general purpose zoom for the E-mount system to date. Unlike the Mark 1 model, which in my test became softer as the focal length increased, the new Mark 2 version remains crisp throughout its range, delivering fine details and high contrast right across the frame. The lens now focuses faster and closer than before and crucially maintains the sharpness even at its minimum distance, while the declickable aperture ring, adjustable zoom resistance and the lens hood with a filter window are all nice additions. The icing on the cake is packing it all into a barrel that's not only a little shorter than rivals but noticeably lighter, making it more attractive for long event work. Like its predecessor, there's still no optical stabilisation, and as an f2.8 zoom it won't deliver the ultimate bokeh quality of a top end prime lens, but the rendering is still attractive whether you're shooting portraits or close ups. It's amazing how much optical design has improved even in the 6 years since Sony first launched the G Master series, but the 24-70 2.8 GM Mark II proves that an already decent lens can be significantly improved. The older model does remain on sale at a slightly lower price, but if you're spending this sort of money, I'd recommend new owners stretch to the Mark II model as its performance upgrades justify the premium. Meanwhile, if you're after a much more affordable 2.8 standard zoom, Sigma and Tamron have you covered. With updated versions of the 24-70GM and 70-200GM, it also begs the question, what's next for the Mark II treatment? In terms of age, the 85 1.4 GM becomes the obvious candidate, although I reckon there's room for a new 50 1.4 at a more affordable price and more compact size than the recent 50mm 1.2 GM. Or how about updated versions of the ageing 70-200 f4 or 90mm macro? Tell me in the comments not just what you think of the new 24-72.8, but also which models Sony should upgrade next. And that's the end of another review, so as always I'm going to ask you for a like and a follow if you found any of it useful, or score bonus points by treating yourself to a Camera Labs t-shirt or mug, or perhaps a copy of my in-camera photography book. There's links to everything, including the latest prices on the lens below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.